All right, we just got here to a customer's house. Um, he's still a few minutes out. The dog is barking, welcoming me. <laughs> but uh, this is actually a dual fuel system. Uh, has a oil furnace on in the basement and he has a heat pump out here. Um, he said the heat pump was just buzzing the other day. Uh, so he switched over to emergency heat and he's been running on his oil heat. Um, and now we're out here to look at it. All right, well, the first thing we're gonna check here to see if we have any power. We're not gonna touch the disconnect yet. We're not gonna, because in case that's um, a loose connection or something in there. We know we have low voltage power because we have not much of a display, but we do have some display here. So let's check and see if we have high voltage power. All right, so we're gonna go between here and here, nothing. All right, so we have no power. Let's just check each one to ground, nothing. Nothing, okay. Pull the disconnect. We have no power. So he said he's gonna get the dog put away. And then we'll go in and check the breaker. See if it's tripped. Maybe it just got turned off. Or maybe something more serious. Okay, perfect. Okay, yeah, we got a tripped breaker right here. Now I have the disconnect pulled outside, so we'll see what happens. All right, well, before we go ahead and restore power, I'm just gonna check to see if we have anything to ground. Oh, well, we did first. Maybe not. Solid connection there. Okay, well maybe we don't. I thought we did it first, but we don't. Nothing there. Nothing there, okay. All right, might have, might have just been a simple tripped breaker, but we'll still do a due diligence and um, take a look. So let's see if maybe we have a locked rotor compressor or something like that let's go ahead and <clears throat> all right our, our contactor's not pulled in so let's go to the thermostat we'll give it a call all right well came right on so that's a good thing it says hi is this two stage No, it's not two-stage. just says hi. All right, well, we'll check for some burnt wires, loose wires, stuff like that. See why this breaker trip. We'll do an amp draw. Currently pulling 8.9 amps. Line set is getting warm. All right, so we're gonna test this capacitor uh, under load. So we're gonna go between common and Herm, and we have 357. Now we're going to test this red wire here, because that's coming off of our Herm right there red wire right there. We're going to test the amp draw on that. 
and it's 6.05. So we're gonna plug that in our HVAC school app. Let's check the voltage one more time. I think it was 357. Yep, 357 and 6.0. Let's see that. We're gonna go to underload capacitor test and we tested 357. Our amperage was 6.05. And then our rating is 45. And this capacitor is good, 44.96. That is very close to five. We only have a 0.09% variation. So this capacitor is good. All right, next we're just gonna check and see Make sure everything's tight. We have no burnt wires inside of our disconnect or our breaker panel. We're gonna check the breaker panel too, guys. Some guys are afraid of the breaker panel. They don't wanna take the panel off, but um, I would say to those technicians, start getting comfortable with taking a panel off. Taking a cover off a breaker panel because um, I've found multiple issues with breakers, breaker panels. I even have video of it on this channel where I've solved HVAC issues by being inside the breaker panel. So I would say get comfortable with being inside a breaker panel, guys. So, all right, let's get the covers off and everything uh, of the disconnect and uh, see if we have any burn up wires. All right, we went ahead and disconnected power and we're gonna take a flat headed screwdriver over to our disconnect. And we're just gonna make sure they're all tight. That one's tight, 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 and tight. Just gonna give them all a tug. Make sure nothing's coming out. All right, we're gonna check over here now at the contactor. That's tight. So is that. I'm gonna make sure we have nothing rubbing. get this little cover off of the contact a lot of times they have a screw in them but this kind has a little clip that pops on so we're gonna get that try to get that little cover off so we can inspect this contactor All right, inspection of the contactor looks good. We're gonna take and remove coil voltage just so we can inspect a little better. Nothing burnt up with that contactor. Looks good. All right. All right, all of our high voltage looks good, so we are next going to pull the cover off the breaker panel. What? Oh, that's all he wants. He just wants some scritches. Just wants some scritches. All right, here's our breaker. I'm gonna make sure it's tight. Both those wires are tight. Now I can tell this breaker is a little older than the rest of these breakers. I'm not saying it's bad, but it is older. For some reason it's got an X on it. You guys see that? That's weird. Let me just see if I have a 20 amp uh, square D. QO breaker on me and if I do I'll just go ahead and change it you know cheap part just be on the safe side All right, I don't have a 20 amp I do have a 30 so I wanted to look and see um, yeah our max fuse is a 30 
Let's see what our minimum circuitry is. A lot of times they'll put a minimum cir minimum circuit is 18.6, total current 15.1. Okay, so we are we are sized appropriately. This is 12 gauge wire, which is uh, good for 20 amps. Um, but my 30 amp breaker would be oversized. So um, we'll need to go back with a 20. 12 gauge, 20 amps, 10 gauge, 30 amps, and so on. Uh, 8 gauge would be 40 amps. And then um, 6 gauge would be 50. And like I said, and so on. So our uh, 30 amp breaker won't work. So, but that's okay. I mean, I'm not even sure the breaker was bad. It was just a precautionary measure that I was going to take. All right, pop the breaker out just to inspect it. Doesn't look burnt up. Doesn't smell burnt either. Bus bar looks okay too. All right, let's pop this breaker back in. Yeah, guys, I just wanted to go over a couple points that I check whenever I have a trip breaker um, when you really can't find why it tripped. So um, I just basically went through all the electrical components, uh, ohmed the compressor out, uh, checked the breaker, checked to make sure there's no burn spots on the breaker and, um, and stuff like that. So um, that's how I do it. Um, if you guys have any input, put it down in the comments. But that's how I work through a, a trip breaker system. So next up, we have another electrical issue that we found. Uh, we got called out to the house for a, um, a no heating and um, it was a disconnect issue. So take a All look. Right. We've got a unit here, heat on at the thermostat, but our outdoor unit's not running. Well, the disconnect is turned off for starters. <laughs> well, if we got it back on it still didn't come on but all right kenny open up the panel over here we'll see what's going on all right, well we just turned the disconnect on contactor is pulled in Let's see if there's any fuses in this disconnect here i don't think that, that might not have been on all the way because it felt like it turned off pretty easily there is fuses here doesn't seem like it's a very solid connection there. Grab the meter, Ken. Yeah, it's not, I can tell right now it's not pushed up all the way, locked in. So this, let me show you guys what I'm talking about. This right here should be all the way locked. This, these blades should be locked up into there. Let's see if we got power. All right, so this should be our power in. All right, we got 240, 244, but nothing here. All right, we're gonna take a insulated screwdriver and see if we can push those those fins or those blades the rest of the way up. Got an insulated screwdriver here. Let's see if we can push it all the way up. And we did. Got it going. But that disconnect's definitely gonna have to be replaced. Should have one on the truck. The only bummer is I don't know how well it's gonna fit in that. Now they have this cut out here, the siding. Right, we're gonna replace this disconnect now. Killed the power, Kenny's going ahead and uh, breaking the wires free. Someone sided around it, so it's gonna be a little tricky, but it should be that bad. All right, we're moving right along with the disconnect. Got the old one out, got the new one mounted. Kenny's wiring it up now. The new disconnect definitely is smaller than the old one, so we had to improvise. We had to make it work, um, but it'll, it'll all work out in the end. So Kenny's going to tighten all them down, get that going, and then we'll turn the unit back on. This unit's from 2022. It was 
So this unit's only two years old, so that means they did an outdoor unit um, and left the indoor unit in 2010. So, yeah, they send you these right here sometimes so you can match it up with your indoor, this orifice here. They got the orifice, a little O-ring, and then this little, this little needle right here, that's the orifice remover that Goodman sends. It seems in 2022, 20, when they did the outdoor unit, they didn't uh, replace the disconnect because that disconnect's pretty old, but now it's went up. You know, it wasn't locking in all the way, so that's what happened. They'll pay us to put one in now, though. <laughs> all right, we're off and running. Uh, new disconnect, clean coil. It should be everything, honestly. I'm not going to bother checking the charge because it's actually running pretty good. The unit went into defrost just before we left. I just want to make sure it comes out of defrost properly. And uh, we'll be good to go here. And it did come out of defrost properly. Um, yeah, so just really a, a bad disconnect there. Um, don't know why it was turned all the way off, but uh, it was turned off at some point. Uh, but yeah, pretty simple. Uh, two electrical issues for this one, guys. Um, and then, like I said in the first uh, clip, just some things to look for when you have a trip breaker. So, all right, guys, that's going to be it for this one. So go ahead and hit the thumbs up and uh, subscribe if you're new here. Catch you on the next one.